welcome back. Right, first of all, apologies for the daft voice. This is a result of uh, four days cold um, and not very much sleep. So uh, I'm apologizing for this now because this probably sounds rubbish, but I've got no choice because it's, it's healing slowly. Uh, I lost my voice completely two days ago and it's only just come back yesterday. Um, Penny says I sound like Phil Mitchell now, which is, I don't know if that's a compliment or not really, you've got to watch her because she's gunning like that. Anyway, what I want to show you today is something that I've bought, which I think is a really cool toy. Um, I can't do any fabrication today because I've got to work in three hours time and I've got to get this video up online for Wednesday's upload. Um, we've got a pretty punishing schedule this week. It's Christmas week, or it's approaching Christmas week now, as you know. If you look at the date, if, you, if it's after Christmas, look at the date underneath. Um, <clears throat> we've got three videos in a row to make. I've got to make this one today and get it up uh, because I've got to do something to the bike today that's extremely important that I've been putting off for a long time and this new tool is going to be useful for that. Tomorrow I've got to make a patrons video and Friday I have to make the video for Saturday's upload for the weekend and the reason for that is that Saturday itself I can't afford to be in the garage here because it's Christmas Eve, Penny's got a store as you know she's got a jewellery business and I have to be there to help her it's the busiest day of the year first so I've got to spend the day there. So I haven't got the chance to be in the garage on Saturday so I've got to make Saturday's video on Friday. So these next three days we're making and producing three videos in a row so it's pretty punishing roughly 12-15 hours a day. Um, it's Wednesday right now. Yesterday, Tuesday and day before Monday, I did two 15 hour shifts in a row to get my weekly hours up. Because uh, I do a semi part time job now, 30 hours a week. Uh, so I've really honestly taking care of business this week is extremely punishing. Enough of that anyway. <clears throat> honestly, excuse me. So right, I wanted to show you this first of all. Um, I bought this little gadget the other day I just couldn't resist it I've seen other people using them and I really wanted one it's an infrared thermometer you've never seen them looks a bit like a taser um, just a sec here we are that's a regular thermometer as you know if you see the, th the temperature in here is about 12 degrees looking at that that's centigrade this infrared thermometer works in a different way excuse me Honestly, this is old work. Um, now this works in a different way. What it does, it measures the surface of things, the surface temperature, not the air temperature. So if you fire it at something, that will tell you that my hand is 30 degrees. If I fire it at the wall over there, that's about eight degrees. So the surface temperature of the, the concrete floor, the concrete walls, the steel on the bikes, the toolbox, the, even the wooden bench is about seven or eight degrees. Whereas the air temperature in here is 12 degrees. It's a very different thing. Now, I've been having loads of fun playing with this. It was only eight pounds on eBay. I just thought I'd have a bit of fun with it because I thought of an amazing test that I could use for this, which really will dispel an enormous hysteria of myth that came up about the belly pan. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to jack the bike up and I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> Welcome back. Right. <clears throat> now you remember this. Um, when, we were, when I was making the belly pan, there was an absolutely hysterical response to it being over hot inside and that it needs ventilation. The conversations that we had with you all about ventilating the belly pan just went on and on and on and on. It didn't stop. People were literally panicking. This thing was just going to catch fire and burn out, honestly. So what I thought I'd do is use this today to measure the temperature of the surface of the belly pan, which is currently 10 degrees with the engine running. Um, so I'm going to run the motor up because it hasn't been run for something like six months, I think, well, since we started the project. Those of you who remember when I first started this, <clears throat> honestly, excuse me, <clears throat> when I first started the project, I ran the, I, I took the fuel tank off and I ran the hose down and I emptied the float bowls. So there's no fuel in the system at all. Now, 
it's come winter time now so at night time it gets to about two degrees in here and it's all metal and stone so that cold followed by then i come in during the day to work and i put the heater on and it gets up to the air temperature gets up to perhaps sort of 20 degrees uh, and the metal temperatures are getting up to about 10 or 15 and that obviously has an, the, the effect of possible condensation and <clears throat> The, conversation, the condensation I'm talking about is the damaging stuff inside the engine. When the engine's got air inside it, if that air is in any way moist, as soon as you get a hot cold transition, you get water forming, water droplets. And if that forms on stuff like the camshafts, it's very important. It will still happen no matter what you do, but it's very important if there's a coating of oil over those parts, it won't have any effect. It will just wash away when you fire it up again. So because this engine has been stood still, and motionless, it hasn't turned over for four or five months. It really should do, just to pump the oil up to the top, get, <clears throat> excuse me, get everything up to working temperature so that everything settles right down again. I wanna get the fan kicking in. I haven't actually tested whether the fan kicks in or not. It's got the Evans waterless coolant in it, which again, we haven't tested up to working temperature. Well, I have, but only the once. And it was kicking a little bit of excess fluid out of the pipe and I know it does that so I want to see if it does it again it's kicked out probably about an egg cup full of fluid from full I want to see if it kicks out anymore because uh, it stopped kicking it out once it got to a point um, so I guess the levels dropped a bit <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some fuel in this drop it off the bench uh, well, drop it down put some fuel in it fire it up um, I'm not going to put fuel into the fuel tank <clears throat> because the bike's going to stay off the road uh, until it's finished and the fuel tank will be painted in the future uh, I don't want fuel in there going stale at the moment the petrol tank is bone dry and it's got a layer of WD-40 around the inside of it so it won't rust so I don't want to go putting fuel in that and have to do it all again so I'm going to use uh, just a header tank method with a funnel just in order to get that done all right so I'm going to drop this down fire up the engine get this up to working temperature and see for real just exactly how hot this gets. Remember, we've got paint on this, we've got filler all around the inside lip, we've got filler on this. Is it all gonna blister and burn? Is it gonna melt? Is it gonna catch fire? Or is it just gonna get warm? We don't know. You're gonna see as I do. So let's get some fuel. making a header tank like a very small very sort of makeshift um, fuel tank just for the sake of this exercise and I'm just going to take that around there the electrical tape will stop the fuel leaking out of this joint for a short period certainly long enough to do this there we are right <clears throat> so I can now fill this up with petrol it won't leak anywhere and it will feed the engine for the, for the duration of what is going to be about uh, probably a 15 minute test uh, just to run it up, get it right up to temperature. So let's get some fuel out on the other bikes. And there we go. It starts a bit siphon. Just need about half a pint. So if you siphon in fuel, you can use that vacuum method or you can just use a proper siphon in the first place anyway. That's blagged half a pint of fuel out of the bike. Okay, um, now for the purpose of this, baffle in, and the only reason I'm keeping the baffle in, it won't ride with the baffle in normally, but I'm leaving it in just to give a little bit of back pressure uh, until I know exactly whether it's running perfectly or not. And it does run perfectly with it in, so that's no issues. Um, we've got our makeshift header tank all done. I mean that is really Heath Robinson but it is safe because all this is taped up nice and solid. Nothing's going to leak, that's secure and it's just going to run up sat here. Uh, the worst I might do is run it over by the door as it starts warming up. But the first thing I've got to do is get the fuel in, uh, prime through probably about, I don't know, 60-70 mils to fill all the, I think it's 10 mils in each 
I'm not quite sure exactly, in each bowl. Uh, so to get them all filled up before it will start dragging any fuel into the motor and fire. So let's get it fired up, it's been a long time. See if it starts. It's been a long time. Six months bone dry. Unbelievable. Honestly, this has not been started for something like five or six months. And just prime it with fuel and it just fired straight up. That is incredible. Drunk all that fuel for sure. Amazing. Unbelievable. It's just cold, that's all.
<coughs> so what have we proved? <coughs> We've proved categorically that <coughs> this belly pan doesn't get hot. And I'm as surprised as you might be. Um, I honestly thought that pipe right there, even at this point, this has been switched off now for five minutes. That's still 42, 43 centigrade. It was running at about 69, 70 centigrade while the engine's running. The top of the header was running at 150. The collector, where the gases are forced into one under pressure, <clears throat> they were running at about 150 as well. But one of the other questions asked was, is this tailpipe gonna burn the, my, the sole of my boot? Well, not if it doesn't burn the back of my hand, is it? You know, I really, I, I'm so pleased with the results, I can't say it enough. Um, the radiator, obviously, even to now, still 62, 62 63 degrees uh, centigrade. <clears throat> that was running at about 110 at the peak, which shows that the, um, the Evans waterless coolant uh, does run higher than boiling point. Um, so the, the surface temperature of the radiator was up at 110. So it's, it's, it's chucking out the heat. It's effectively uh, dispatching the heat out through the matrix. Uh, you heard the, the fan kick in over and over and over again. So this was standing still with no passing air whatsoever in a garage that's ambient temperature is about 12 degrees, which is like it is outside. It's not by any means cold or hot. And the surface temperature of this glorious belly pan is cool, is cool enough to touch. I mean, the back of your hand on the front, that gets the closest to being uncomfortable, right at this lip where it covers the radiator. It's 33 degrees centigrade, which is what? It's about bath water temperature. So it's never, ever going to burn the paint, not in a million years. Um, what was most surprised about was here, this outlet tube here, I thought would be untouchable, might blister the fill around the front. You can put the back of your finger against it, and this one. And of course, these stainless steel tubes are, I would say, that one is maybe two and a half, three mil away from touching that steel pipe. But there's the fundamental point. <clears throat> it's not touching it. And without touching it, it's not going to conduct heat. It relies on air in between the joint to conduct the heat across. So as one is, so you could take two pieces of metal. If you touch them against each other, they'll equalize temperature eventually. If you move them even one millimeter apart, you keep this one hot for a source of power, this one will still go cold. The air in between, air does not conduct heat particularly well. Um, <clears throat> moving air, has effects like that but I think I wanted to address the enormous um, concern that many of you showed back when we did this that it was going to cause problems and that these vents were essential um, and it's not going to be cool enough and it's going to blister the paint and so on I think we proved categorically I mean to check the other side as well it's exactly the same in fact the other side is a little bit cooler uh, the hottest part of the belly pan like I said was the front nothing at all down here Underneath the collector is stone cold. I think because obviously heat rises and this panel is underneath it. So it's, there we are. The engine block at its temperature height was 110 degrees right on the inside between the cylinder heads. On the outside here you saw was about 70. So that little tool worth uh, eight pounds 66 pence from eBay has allayed all my fears. <coughs> and when Mackie comes to do the paintwork, the airbrush paintwork on this, I will have absolutely no fears whatsoever that we can use airbrush paint and standard regular lacquer. But as I said, the point being here, that was another little triumph. I was worried about that myself too. I really want this pipe here. I love it. It looks like a little GP pipe. And I like that. That's where I want it. Um, it is very close to the foot peg uh, and it might possibly touch the sole of my boot. Um, maybe this lip edge. But if I can put the back of my finger against it and it's not uncomfortable, it's not going to do any damage at all. Right. Point proven, I think. <clears throat> Voice almost lost again. I'm going to put all the stuff back on this and drop it down, get it ready for the next video. Right. 
Okay, so what have we learned here? Um, if you're gonna run your bike up uh, periodically in the winter, then make sure that you don't leave it any longer than about eight weeks. Two months is absolutely enough because that's when the fuel starts to degrade. Modern fuel contains benzene, Benzene contains a tiny percentage of water. That's terribly damaging. Also, that fuel just goes horrible and stale and sticky. It tends to desiccate, it dries out, concentrates, and it becomes sticky and it bungs up all the jets. If you've got fuel injection, it can be even more damaging to the pump. Um, <clears throat> so two months is maximum. Uh, if you want to, if it's in the tank, you can use a bit of stabilizer, fuel stabilizer, that helps. But again, make sure you run the engine at least 45 minutes like I did just then. Make sure if you have a fan, it kicks in and out a good four or five times so you're absolutely at working temperature and you hold it at working temperature for at least half an hour. That's very important and that will dry any moisture out of the oil. <clears throat> the moisture, will my voice outlast this video? Questions on a postcard. <clears throat> The moisture gets into the oil via condensation, so you get the hot gases, the cold steel engine parts, the two don't mix when you start the engine up. That cold steel engine is a bit like when you take a bottle of milk out of the fridge and you put it in a hot kitchen. It just gets frost down the side of it, <clears throat> or condensation, and that's exactly the same thing. You'll get condensation inside your engine on the cold metal parts, it ends up in the oil. So if you want to vaporize that water content out of your oil, Again, it needs to be 45 minutes, otherwise it will just stay there and it will end up with an oily emulsion. When this goes on the road next year, it will get a full oil change and filter and everything else long before it does. So that oil that's in there is not important. It's actually only done a thousand miles, that oil, so it's, it's perfectly fine for the storage purposes. Um, <clears throat> what's next? Right, the next thing is on the belly pan, belly pan, on, on the tail panel at the back, excuse me, <clears throat> On the tail panel, I've just got to weld up the three holes, which are the filler caps of the original tanks, and then smooth them over. That's a reasonably detailed job. I've got to cut out the lip that remains there, make a little patch panel, patch it in, weld it round, grind it flat, and make a good job of that. Then I can start in the new year to make this section in between, to make it a proper seat unit. At the moment, that's just the tail panel on the back. So that's, that's the wire. Um, absolutely loads of this wire we had kindly donated loads and loads of it that will make a good job much like i did on the top there wire fiberglass shaping and so on so that's the, that's the next two videos on the tail <clears throat> as i said tomorrow i've got a video to make and get up that's a patrons video so that will just be for those and on friday i'm filming again so my voice should be back hopefully a bit better by then and i can do the welding on that patch those panels in that's it now as Christmas is coming, Penny and I are going to have Christmas and Boxing Day off. Um, and then once then that week, Christmas week, we're going to do uh, a question and answer Q&A video. We've posed for questions to the patrons, that's what tomorrow's video is. And we're going to be doing a short Q&A with a prize draw for the remaining six bottles of FS365. Scott Eiler stepped up <clears throat> and agreed to send the product to the winner in Finland and the winner in Ireland. So those two batches of three bottles, those six bottles are left over. So we're going to draw six names out of that gold box. And six of you, if you've entered, will have an opportunity to win one bottle. And we'll just post it to you. Simple as that. So just sharing the love, baby. Uh, then after that, it'll just be a little Q&A. So that'll be a bit of fun and games. And then once the new year turns, it'll be back to normal and back into the project for real. Um, beyond that, we're looking at possibly I've got service to do on the fat boy. And once Penny starts riding the scrambler again, there'll be a service to do on that. And I think it's time. No, it's not. It's, a, it's just the interim 6,000, but I might check the valve clearances so I can show it to there as well. Anyway, <clears throat> there we are, probably the croakiest video ever. Um, like I said, my audition for Phil Mitchell is now entered. Uh, if, if he ever <laughs> decides to leave the job, I might get the part. So there we are, belly pan, heat issues, busted. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, take easy, ride safe, and I'll see you at the weekend.